Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. We are delighted to talk to Mr. Yuri Sergeyev, the Ambassador of Ukraine to the United Nations. Mr. Sergeyev, thank you for having the time for us. Mr. Sergeyev, is there any chance to divest Russia the right of veto? Well, it's not easy. Uh, but the consolidation of uh, the, member, the member states is crucial in that situation. Uh, what is important that one of the um, uh, permanent members, namely France, initiated uh, themselves to limit, it, to limit the, uh, uh, the usage of this veto right in, uh, in the cases of atrocities, in the cases of uh, the um, uh, 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 the danger to the, uh, the lives of the human beings. This initiative, which was uh, proclaimed three sessions back, uh, is broadly supported. And uh, within this session, we will have a special meeting co-hosted by France and Mexico on the issue. Uh, so Ukraine is very and very supportive mm, of this initiative, as well as other countries. Um, for this initiative, the support of the United States is, uh, is absolutely important. Uh, recently, uh, the permanent representative, uh, representative of the United States, Samantha Power, declared uh, their vision and the necessity to limit uh, the um, introduction and usage of the, of the veto right in the case of atrocities. Uh, uh, the American delegation pointed on the um, destructive uh, uh, role of Russia, uh, whose delegation used four times a veto right uh, in the case of Syria, and it brought to uh, uh, and enlarged the, uh, uh, the losses of human lives uh, in times. Well, so um, saying that, uh, um, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, the uh, United Nations uh, are more united today to limit uh, the veto rights um, in the Security Council and most probably this, uh, this General Assembly will be uh, exactly the place where the uh, decision on this limitation will be taken. What is the procedure of devastation any country of its right of veto? Yes, we are, um, uh, first of all, uh, first of all, to come back to the initiative of France, mm. it's very important that uh, those, uh, the holders of the veto right, should agree among themselves. So, How many the five. <clears throat> five. Five. five Fra France, uh, UK, uh, United States, uh, China, and Russia. Uh, they are to understand that um, the voluntary uh, usage of uh, veto, uh, well, um, mm, is harming, has harmed, and will harm the uh, uh, the, uh, the the very uh, the very uh, core of the uh, Security Council: <clears throat> how to protect peace and security. If you are using uh, the veto, which enlarging the uh, uh, the danger to the peace and security. So, first of all, uh, uh, the permanent members they are to agree among themselves. So, it will facilitate the uh, the whole process. The second, <clears throat> if any of them is not in a position to do that, the General Assembly is in a position. So that is why the initiative of France uh, started to work beyond the Security Council. Uh, and we have a, uh, now a big amount of the countries who are supporting this veto. So if we come to the um, two-thirds majorities um, in the General Assembly, we may uh, we may break the, uh, the old principles and uh, mm, to bring amendments to the charter, to bring mm, uh, the new rules, which are mm, of uh, extreme importance. This is what uh, uh, we are doing uh, now, trying to revitalize the General Assembly to upgrade the role of, it's better to, uh, uh, to bring to the General Assembly its, its natural role, it is a parliament. Parliament uh, should take the decisions, and the executive bodies they should uh, uh, um, realize what is being uh, adopted in the General Assembly. So, uh, revitalization of uh, General Assembly is of the crucial importance, and uh, reforms of the Security Council. Not only uh, enlargement of the permanent seats or non-permanent seats, but uh, the very philosophy of the Security Council. The, uh, 
the, uh, the modalities how they work. They should be more transparent, they should be more mm, inclusive, and they should uh, uh, start working in the preventive manner. Uh, uh, we can't uh, mm, afford ourselves to have the peacekeeping operations lasting decades. Look at Cyprus, more than three decades we have peacekeepers. Some African uh, countries, they are mm, not enjoying having the peacekeepers uh, for also more than 20 decades. So, uh, uh, these examples are mm, uh, uh, bringing the clear picture that something is wrong within the Security Council. Uh, on our request to, mm, to take the decision and send peacekeepers, so they are mm, uh, well learning this issue since uh, last February. To take the decision to send anywhere uh, uh, the peacekeepers, the Security Council needs at least one year. In such a circumstances, should the United Nations think about the reconstruction of the system? Uh, this, is what, this is what we are going to, um, um, to accent on uh, in, in our statements and during the high-level meeting uh, on the peacekeeping operation. So uh, this is what the... Uh, the uh, the, the, the huge majority of the countries they are mm, um, uh, demanding to, to bring immediate changes to, the, to these procedures uh, and to demand from the uh, Security Council to work in a preventive man manner. Preventive manner uh, never been performed in the, in the Security Council. So they are reactive, not proactive. If we are talking about the main issues which we as Ukraine should raise uh, during the UNGA, what it should be? Ukraine became a victim of the mani manipulation of the Charter. We will defend Charter in all our statements. We will <clears throat> welcome all uh, membership to protect uh, the UN Charter and UN principles there. This is uh, uh, absolutely necessary and will be our first priority. Defending the security, uh, uh, the, the defending the, um, the Charter we are defending ourselves because we are defending the mechanism which the United Nations could bring to stop aggression in Ukraine. Defending the, the charter, uh, we are preparing the way how to uh, uh, bring the perpetrators to uh, the tribunals. So for us, the charter is of absolute importance. The second, the reforms of the Security Council. Without these reforms, not only Ukraine, but uh, other states could be in a danger. So reforms, reforms. Uh, the, uh, the core of these reforms, a veto, to limit veto. So we'll mm, uh, speak on that. Uh, so these two issues uh, for us now, they are vitally important. What could be a reaction on today's address of the Pope Francis in the United Nations? Uh, those who uh, followed the, uh, the address of, uh, of Pope uh, mm, noticed that uh, he was applauded dozens of times because he pointed out on the, uh, the vital problems of the mankind today. Uh, he mentioned Ukraine, he mentioned uh, Syria, he mentioned African countries because uh, we are suffering of uh, injustice. We are suffering of uh, the uh, mistreatment of the main... Uh, <coughs> Uh, made provisions of the United Nations Charter. Uh, mm, he addressed the United Nations to bring uh, all our mm, uh, minds to uh, the goals the United Nations was created for. Uh, the, uh, these goals are in the preamble of the Charter. He, in his speech, de facto, he tried to defend, to defend, to protect the Charter. This is Natalka Pisnia for Ukraine Today from New York.